welcome to this live paint along. Uh, my name's Allie, if you are new here. Um, I'm so glad that you made your way over to my page today um, to either paint with me or watch me create this painting. So I do these live paint alongs every Monday at five Eastern. And we, we always um, kind of paint something different. We're starting a new series today. Um, which is going to be a floral series. I'm so excited for this. Um, and it seems very fitting that we are switching gears to flowers right now. It is raining outside um, and like 35 degrees here and just kind of yucky. And depending on where you are in the country, 35 might sound really warm. <laughs> but here in Chattanooga, that's really cold for winter. So here we are, we're thinking about flowers. Hi, Kathy. Um, yeah, as you guys are all jumping in, um, I'm glad to see you in the comments here. And um, feel free to please say hello in the comments and let us know where you're watching from and also let me know if you are painting with me. I know a lot of you got the download for this. Um, so also if you're new, you might not know how this works. So I do these live paint alongs. It's totally free to watch them and learn. Um, but if you want to jump in and actually create it with me, you can do that either live or afterwards at watching the replay. So I have a download of these outlines that you can trace on your panel and you can find that download on my website, alliekstudio.com. I'm also gonna put it in the comments here. Um, so I'd love for you to grab that download and um, join in the fun. Hi, Judy. And oh, these comments are going so fast. I'm trying to catch them all. Um, hi, Janet in Las Vegas. Um, let's see, Debbie's not painting, but watching from Maine. Hi, Bridget, and Bridget's painting with me. Awesome, how exciting, I'm just so glad. I know a lot of you have been asking for flowers for a while, so here we are. Kathy, you've got five inches of snow. Wow, my kids would love that. Maybe we don't get a lot of snow here. <laughs> and Dawn in Canada, welcome. Hi, Victoria. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to show you guys the panels that I use. I realized I'd never really told you, um, so you all know we use golden paints. I'm using golden fluid acrylics, and the download includes the list of paints that I use. Um, but this is the panel that I'm painting on, um, and I got this from Jerry's Artorama. I buy these in a four pack, um, and I like the thicker sides because I like to leave them unframed. Um, so I buy the inch and a half thickness sides, and if you buy a four pack of these, they come out to be about like $8 a panel, which is not too bad. So I thought I would just recommend this, Da Vinci Pro Panels. These are nice and not too expensive. So I just stocked up on those. I just got myself two four packs, so I'd be set for a little while. Um, and I'll pop the link maybe into the live here with, with the link to that um, product at Jerry's. Um, hi, Chris, and you're painting with me? Awesome. Okay, are you guys ready to get started? We're gonna paint some fun flowers and Victoria in Chattanooga, Lisa in Austin. Cool, all right, um, let's go, okay? I'm gonna adjust the camera here, bring it in a little bit so you all can see what I see, and I try to make it so you can also see my palette a little bit. That feels pretty good. I think we're doing pretty well here. Um, okay, does that look good to you guys? I think that looks pretty good. I try to squeeze everything that I can in so you can see what's going on. You can kind of see some of my mixing here. I'm gonna to try to do most of my mixing up in front so you can see a little better. I guess you can see over here too. So we'll try to do some mixing there. All right, so you've got your outlines on your panel. You trace them using transfer paper. And then we painted over the outlines using a skinny little script liner brush like this. Um, and we just mixed up a light kind of grayish purple. Um, I made this from alizarin crimson, Payne's gray and white, but you could really do any neutral. Um, we just wanted to cover up those pencil lines. Um, so we have a nice fresh start here. 
Okay. Let's go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start looking for the shadows. So we're going to do um, this underpainting wash um, and we're going to find our shadows using alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. So that's kind of the combo that I use to do my underpainting shadows. It just makes kind of like a nice dark purple. Um, and I am using flat tip brushes. Um, let's see, we got someone in Utah. I just missed who that was, Ontario. All right, everybody. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not looking at the colors, guys. I'm just looking at the dark shapes. So the first dark shapes that I see are these dark leaves. So I'm just going to start filling in these shapes. That's all I'm doing is shape finding. Not worried about um, the colors. I'm not so much worried about the outlines. Um, we're gonna kind of basically chip away at these outlines that we put down. So by the end of it, we really won't see them anymore. These are just kind of our beginning roadmap to start finding these shapes, but we're basically gonna cover them all up. Um, and I'm just thinning my paint with water right now. Um, hi, Carla and Jan. I love seeing so many of you watching here tonight, and I can't wait to see all the paintings that come out of this. I think we're gonna have some beautiful floral paintings. If you guys don't know, those of you that are painting with me or you're gonna paint later with me, I have a Facebook group called Allie's Paint Friends, and that's where everybody posts their um, paint along paintings afterwards. So it's always fun to pop in there and see kind of everyone's different interpretations of the same painting. Um, and I feel like everybody kind of learns a lot by looking at what everyone else is doing. So I'm just working my way around, comparing shapes, looking at what's dark and what's light. Um, so these are highlights. This is all pretty light, so I think I'm going to Move on to the next flower. I'll put a little shadow on here too, I guess. Just a little bit of one. We've got like an overlap here on that one. All right. Um, let's see, Amy says, thank you for doing flowers. You're welcome. It was a long time coming. I know everybody was itching for some flowers, but we had fun doing those farm animals too. Um, that was a fun little series. We did five farm animals uh, the last well, I guess it was six weeks because I took one week off while I was skiing. So that was kind of how we kicked off the year. So I'm just going to go through the whole thing with the same color recipe, um, the alizarin crimson Payne's gray wash. Just looking at which side of my outline is light and which side is dark, and I'm just washing it in. And I'm, I probably am using too small of a brush. I'm using a number one. I should probably be using a number two for this right now. But you guys notice how I'm holding my brush pretty far back? That's important. Um, I always, always uh, mention that. Uh, let's see, hi Debbie. Um, it's sleeting weather in Pennsylvania. Ugh, it's kind of just yucky everywhere. I know, well, a lot of people are getting unexpected snow. I've seen some pictures from my friends in Texas and. You guys are probably loving having some fun snow, but um, yeah, just weird weather everywhere. Let's see. Talk to my family. I have family in Chicago. Talked to them yesterday and they said it's like zero degrees in Chicago, tons of snow, which I remember I used to live in Wisconsin and that would get old after a little while. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it's definitely prettier than how it looks here. Uh, where everything's just kind of drab right now in Tennessee, but our winter won't be lasting too much longer here, I don't think. Um, let's see. Looking, okay, so it's dark in here. We're just doing this first pass of shape finding. So this is our first wash where we're pretty much doing everything like the same 
darkness and then we're gonna go back afterwards and push the darkest areas a little bit darker. And this was maybe a lot of flowers to include for our one hour demo. So we're going to like definitely be simplifying. We're not gonna put all the details because this is a, quitty, a pretty quick painting. Oh no, I'm stumbling on my words already. <laughs> this is a pretty quick painting. So um, we're not gonna try to get every little petal and every little detail. We're just going to kind of get the essence of the dark areas and the shapes. Um, and you could always go in afterwards and add more detail, which I know a lot of you do. <laughs> but sometimes it's fun just to let a painting be a loose, quick painting and just be done with it and move on to the next one. Um, let's see, Barbara's asking, how do you get the pictures to transfer to paper or canvas? So um, Barbara, I use transfer paper. Um, and I get by a roll of it and you just trace over the printout. So if you download the outlines that I give you, it, it comes exactly the same size as this eight by 10 panel and you just trace over them and it puts an imprint on. Um, and it's nice because it's like a graphite paper so it can actually be erased too. It's not like waxy or anything. Um, but yeah, that's how I do it, pretty simple. And that saves a lot of time um, where you don't have to be doing all the drawing and comparing the proportions. I talk a lot about how I save a lot of time by just transferring outlines because it's not that I don't like drawing, it's just that it takes so long and I really like painting. So I just like getting to the painting part right away. So I try to save time where I can and make my life easier when I can. All right, so moving on to this daisy here. We got a dark shadow down here. You guys see how I'm like moving around the canvas pretty quick. I'm not staying in one area for very long. Um, and I'm just comparing shapes. That's all we're doing here. Um, so we've got a dark little window here around that Daisy, um, and the let's see, we've got the dark vase here. We'll put that in. Whenever you feel a little bit lost in an area, I always say just move to a different area. Um, come back to it later, and that helps you to kind of figure out what's what. Um, see how I'm washing in the background here next to the daisies? That's because there's a highlight here on the white daisies. So we make the background behind it darker, which makes the daisies feel white. And we're gonna do the same thing around this petal right here. We're gonna make it dark behind it. But now here, the daisy is actually in shadow and it's light behind it, so we're gonna switch. We've talked about that a little bit in a few paint-alongs, how sometimes it switches where the highlight is, switches subjects. All right, we're just gonna wash this in dark here. I guess I should have probably painted around that little center part, but that's all right, we'll add that in later. I paint around these petals here. So when you paint around something that's white, it makes it look brighter by putting the shadow around it. Um, all right, just moving around. I've got a pretty dark shadow right in here. All right, looking around. Okay, now if I squint, the yellow part I think is darker than the white petal, so I'm just gonna wash that in here. The center of this daisy is not as dark as the one over here because the one over on the right is in shadow, so I'm just gonna wash that in not quite as dark. And we're 
we're just going around. I'm not, you guys notice I'm not trying to go like right up to my um, outlines. I'm not trying to go perfectly at that edge. I'm being kind of loose about it. I'm letting it be rough because it doesn't need to be right at that line. Um, and that also helps to kind of make those outlines go away and dissolve when we kind of, you know, intentionally go up to them a little bit more loosely. Um, all right, moving along, we've got a shadow underneath this petal, and we've got the vase down here that is dark. Putting that in. A little dark shadow on the side here. Um, and if anybody is just joining us, let me just say welcome again. My name's Allie, and I do these live paint-alongs every Monday at 5 Eastern. Sorry, I keep getting texts. <laughs> it keeps happening. That seems like everybody wants to talk to me while I'm doing my demos. <laughs> All right. And um, this is the first of a series we're doing of floral paint alongs and you can actually download the outlines on my website and paint with me. And you can do that afterwards too. If you're just joining me now, you don't have your outlines, just watch on this one and you can go back um, right away. It's available as a replay on my page. So that's always fun. And then you can kind of paint at your own pace too. I know I work quickly, but that's just because I'm Getting this done in one hour, we don't have a whole lot of time, so I just kind of knock it out, and then if you're a fast painter, you can paint fast with me, and if you're not, you can do it afterwards. Okay, so we kind of got a wash of color going all around the whole thing there, and now I'm gonna go back and push the darkest areas darker. So I'm going to go back with my same two colors, the Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray, Except now I'm gonna have less water and I am just going to um, push those darkest areas. So I'm looking for where it almost looks black in my reference image. Um, so these areas of green leaf, I know it's green, but I'm still just gonna wash it in with this dark kind of reddish tone. Put a little bit more paint gray in there. Reddish purple tone, I guess. Just gonna keep pushing that darker. And then we've got this little window of dark right here. Moving along here, we've got some dark in between the flowers. So if you have your darkest darks and your lightest lights in the right places, a lot of the rest of the painting can kind of be willy-nilly and it'll all still make sense. Um, the most important thing is getting those dark darks and light lights correctly in there. So those mid-tones, it's not that they don't matter, but they certainly don't matter as much. And if you're crunched for time on a piece, finding those darks right away and those brights right away is really the most important thing. Pretty dark in the center here. It's kind of dark right here too, not as dark, but I'm gonna put a little bit in there. It's dark underneath this rose on the center of that daisy. Um, and if you guys have any questions in the comments, please uh, feel free, don't be shy, drop those in. Let me know if you're painting with me. Um, it's always fun to see. Also, I have to say thank you to everyone who has been sharing their flower photos with me. So I asked in my group, Allie's Paint Friends, um, for you guys to submit some floral photos, which was good timing because everybody was getting flowers for um, Valentine's Day and so you guys shared a ton of great ones and this one is comes from my friend Adrian who is actually my neighbor uh, she just lives a few streets over here in Chattanooga um, and she has always tons of beautiful floral photos so this is one of hers um, I did some editing to it to take out the background I took that out in Photoshop so it wouldn't be so busy um, but the rest of the bouquet was just perfect but um, I was about to say, we're gonna do at least four more of these 
floral paint along. So keep those photos coming of your beautiful flowers because I might pick yours and then you get your download for free and we get to paint your flowers. So win-win. All right, moving along with more of these darks. I guess it's real dark in here. Um, let's see, Pat's asking, how do you prepare your board for painting? Um, I just gesso it, um, like two or three coats. I use this gesso that I get from Hobby Lobby, just an acrylic gesso. I'm really not picky about um, gesso. It's just, it is what it is. Um, I, I usually water it down because it comes so thick. And if you water it down and do a few coats, it'll lay down pretty flat. So sometimes I might sand a little bit between the coats, but not always. Um, but yeah, two, at least two coats of gesso is a good idea if you're painting on wood. Or, or you know, really canvas either, but I always kind of push painting on wood. I think it's better, um, at least for the way I like to paint, I don't like having that texture of the canvas. I feel like it kind of, hinders my brush strokes, so I just like a nice smooth surface. All right. So you see how we're starting to kind of develop more form by going back and pushing these darker areas. I have a little bit of water in here now. I guess it's not totally the straight paint, um, but it's definitely darker than what my first pass was. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to kind of create a gradient of steps where we've got mid-tones and darks and highlights. So we're building all this up in the underpainting and then when we start adding the color, it's gonna be really easy um, to find all the shapes because we've got all these darks that are already just kind of mapping everything out for us. And we're getting pretty close. I think um, we've got a good amount of shadows in here. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just push this a little bit. Oh, that's too dark. I'm gonna blot that off. Too much. Just thin it out a little bit. Okay, so now we are going to do the underpainting wash. So I work with a compl complementary color underpainting. That's kind of my, uh, my thing. I like to wash in the opposite color on the color wheel. That's what complementary would be. So um, let's think about for the background, it's mostly this blue teal. And so I think for the background, I am going to do um, my burnt orange recipe. I do this a lot for an underpainting. And I like to make a burnt orange using alizarin crimson and Hansa yellow. If you've done paint alongs with me before, you probably recognize this color combination. Um, it's just a nice kind of, like I said, burnt orange. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of water in there so that it will dry quickly. Um, and I'm just gonna put that into the background. Now the background at the bottom is a little bit darker than at the top, so I'm gonna wash my underpainting in a little bit darker in towards the bottom. And in the top, at the top, I'm going to thin my paint out a little bit. See, I'm just gonna wash that in a little thin, thinner. My paint's pretty thin now. Um, but I just wanna push that you don't have to be perfect at the edges, so let, let it be loose. Um, don't worry about going right perfectly up to the edge. It's actually better if you don't because we want this to be loose. We don't want it to be tight, hard edges. So again, this orange recipe is alizarin crimson and Hansa yellow opaque. So I'm just washing that in everywhere that I see blue, that's where this underpainting color is going to go. So it's pretty thin at the top. Now down at the bottom, I'm gonna get a little bit more paint and I'm gonna wash it in a little bit darker. Maybe I'll even use a little bit more of the alizarin crimson down towards the bottom to push it a little darker. And when I put in this blue background, what, like I said, I took out, there was kind of a busy tablecloth um, behind it. I did that in Photoshop. 
When I took it out, I put in like a gradient, so I made it lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. Um, Janet's asking, what are the colors for the burnt orange? It's alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. And I'm actually gonna do that right over the vase too, because that's all pretty cool colors. So alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, and I'm putting it in a little bit more opaque down at the bottom because the bottom is going to be darker. I just think it's interesting to have the background kind of shift a little bit, not have it all one color. Okay, so we've got our underpainting in the background in. Now the underpainting for the flowers, so the flowers are mostly like orange and you know white and yellow. So I'm actually just gonna do the same color underpainting for all the flowers. I'm going to do, um, uh, permanent Violet Dark. That's one of my other favorite, favorite colors from Golden, which you guys that follow me recognize, I'm sure. Um, I use this underneath skin tones all the time. I, every time I paint skin, I put this color down. It's just gorgeous. Um, and it looks very nice underneath a lot of colors. So we're just gonna put this down under everything. You see I'm not worrying about where the shapes are. I'm not uh, worrying about my outlines. I am just washing this color in. Now in the area where I'm gonna have this white daisy, I'm gonna thin my paint out a little bit and make this purple a little bit lighter because I know that that area is going to be lighter. So I am thinking a little bit about you know that ultimate end game color but it's more about the light and dark than it is about the actual color I hope that wasn't too confusing <laughs> um, like I said this is all just uh, permanent violet dark and water that's really all you need to know and be loose with your brush strokes Hopefully this underpainting will dry fast enough so I can start putting the flowers in. That's always kind of my issue when I'm doing these lives. We go so quickly. I need the underpainting to dry. Um, let's see. Carol's asking alizarin crimson, Hansa yellow for the burnt orange, alizarin crimson, and Payne's gray for the shadow. Correct, Carol. You've got it. So I go through a lot of alizarin crimson. That's a really good color to invest in if you are thinking about buying some golden paints. Um, I just, I love golden paints and that there are certain ones that I feel like you just have to have. That's probably one of them. Um, if you guys want a list of all of my favorite paints from golden, you can find that on my website. I've got, I think it's right on the homepage. It says get alleys or get my list of my favorite paints. So there's like eight or 10 paints that I buy and that's it and you know golden has like a hundred colors so it helps you to kind of know what it is that you would want to use if you're going to be following my painting style and again that's just on my website alleycasestudio.com All right, and I'm using a bigger brush. So this is a seven, do you guys see that? Um, so these large areas, this is how we paint quickly. We just wash it in with a big brush. We wanna get rid of all that white. I know people always ask, why do you do the underpainting? Why do you do it a different color? And ooh, we got a little drip there, no big deal. Um, and part of it is just plain getting rid of the white. I just can't approach a painting if there's so much white. So that's part of it. And then also the colors underneath will make the overpainting colors pop and look really amazing, which you will see as we layer colors tonight. Okay, so pretty much got the underpainting in there. Um, let's see, thank you Francine, looking great already. Well, I, I hope that we get it a little bit better, <laughs> but we're moving along, right? Okay, so the flowers are wet. So we're going to start by putting our overpainting color in the background because the orange is pretty much dry. See, I watered that down so much that we can 
start layering on top. You don't wanna layer color over a wet underpainting because your colors will blend and you don't want that. We wanna keep them separate. I just realized I need you guys to see the top of the panel. Looks like, there you go. Now you can see all of the panel. There we go. Okay, so let's mix up this teal color. And we're going to make that using white, phthalo blue, and phthalo green. Um, and the two phthalo colors, we're hardly gonna touch them because they're super strong colors. Just gonna put a little speck in there. And that's gonna make a really nice teal. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of glaze because we want to thin this out, which will make um, some of that underpainting shine through. So I'm using Liquitex Matte Medium. It doesn't matter what kind of glaze you use though. I just like a glaze that is more of a matte finish. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glaze in there just to thin it out a little bit. Um, if you don't have glaze, don't worry about it. You could add a little bit of water. Um, but I do like to have a little bit of glaze once I start doing my over painting. That's what we're calling this. Okay, so we're just going to start dropping this color in and I'm going to be very careful about leaving bits of my underpainting showing. So we want to leave little bits of that orange showing and I like to kind of especially do it around the edges of my flower, but you don't want it to be like a perfect outline around the flower. You want it to feel random. Um, and again, this color recipe is phthalo green, phthalo blue, and white. And then I added a little bit of glaze. And we're just lightly dropping this in using a big flat tip brush. And, um, kind of being random about those brush strokes. And I always say less is more when you're doing the overpainting. Make sure you leave that underpainting in there, little bits of it, because you can always cover up more of the underpainting, but it's really hard to get it back. So we have a little window here of that blue. And just moving along, trying to stay random with the brush strokes. You don't wanna leave your little islands of orange being all the same shape and size because um, that doesn't feel random or natural. That feels too like computery. So kind of think about that. If you've got a bunch of little islands of orange that all look like they're like the same shape and size, just add a couple dashes of the blue in there to cover some of them up. All right, and we got a little bit of blue and poking in right there and now, as we get down here, it's quite a bit darker. So I'm going to change my recipe a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit more of the phthalo blue, a little bit more of the phthalo green, but it's also a little bit more gray. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Payne's gray in there. That was the blue that we used earlier for our, um, for our shadows in the underpainting. So now we've got phthalo blue, Payne's gray, and phthalo green. Um, and some glaze in there. So I'm just making this new background color a few notches darker um, than what we had before. And you know, if you look at the reference, there's a bit of white behind um, the orange flower here. I don't know that I wanna include that petal. I'm gonna just bring my background in a little bit closer behind that petal, I think. My, my background's a little too dark, I think. I'm gonna add a little more white into it, there. So we're just gonna drop in some of this darker tone around the daisy here. Um, and still leaving that underpainting. All right. And we gotta make sure we leave the vase here so this blue comes up around it. All right, I think, I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, that looks like most of our background there. So we're gonna call that good for the background and we're gonna start putting in these flowers. So hopefully our purple is just about dry. Um, I'm gonna grab a brush here and just blot up a few drips that I have. So if you have some drips of purple, just go in and blot those so that we can start layering um, onto this purple. 
Or if you're watching this after as a replay and you've got some drippy purple, just let it sit for a little while. Um, David said, do you ever use black to darken? I never do, David. I don't even buy black. I don't, I feel like black is kind of a dead color. It just feels like not very, I don't know. It's just not very lively. So I mix my blacks and I usually do that with alizarin crimson and Payne's gray, which really makes a dark purple. If I want it to be a little bit more of a black, then I might add some phthalo green to it. Um, Cause those three colors together will pretty much make a totally inky black. Um, okay. So let's start putting some of these bright orange tones into our flowers. So we're gonna make our um, orange, let's start with this one up here, the lily there. So we're gonna make this orange using Hansa Yellow Opaque. And let's see if it's dry here. Hansa Yellow Opaque White and Pyrrole Red Light. That is our recipe for this orange. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glaze in there, just a little bit though. Um, and we're gonna start looking for the orange highlights on this flower. So we're gonna let the purple kind of serve as the shadow and we're just gonna pop these highlights in. And we'll end up making them a little bit brighter. This is just kind of our first pass at it. So the next pass, we'll probably add a little bit of white to this mixture. But this is just to start finding these shapes and where we've got highlights. And when you're painting flowers, you really wanna think about the fact that they don't always have the highlight on the same part of the petal. So those highlights kind of jump around. On one part of the flower, the highlight might be on one side, on a different part, it might be somewhere else. So you don't wanna to be too mechanical about where you're putting your highlights. You really want to always go back to the reference image and only paint what you see, not what you think you see. Okay, so I think that's all the highlights I wanna put in this one. I'm gonna move on to the next one and I'm still keeping the same color. I might just add a little more red to it. Again, this mixture is Hansa Yellow Opaque, Pyrrole Red Light, and White. And you guys have a little bit of a glare here, I'm noticing now that I'm putting the color in. I'm just gonna adjust some lighting here. Maybe that made it a little better, I can't tell. It's so tricky with the changing light this time of day. When I start the demo, there's daylight and now there's not. Um, so someone just asked, if the complement to orange is blue, why not start with the underpainting under the flowers blue? That's a good question. So I don't always do the true complement. Um, and if I do blue underneath um, this orange, I'm gonna end up getting some green tones because there's a lot of yellow in what I'm layering here. And so when I'm thinning my paint down, that blue and that yellow would turn green and I really don't want to have to fight it so much. So that's kind of why I go with the purple. I just like a more of a warmer feel. Um, I don't do a lot of blue under painting, um, yeah. All right, so we've got a bright highlight here in the background behind this leaf. I wish you guys didn't have such a glare with the light. I guess it's not too bad. Um, all right, moving along. Now, this petal is pretty dark. Over here, we've got some highlights here. And this flower is um, a little bit more pinky red, so I'm just gonna drop a tiny bit more of the um, pyrrol red light in there as I'm moving over here. We'll push this one towards the reds a little bit more later, but right now I'm just looking at 
highlights. So I'm just looking to find these shapes and I'm not caring so much about the tone of the flower. I should also mention, if you guys are ever watching these demos, um, well, either live or after, you can watch them on the Facebook Watch app on your smart TV. So that would be a cool way to be able to um, see the image a little bit bigger. I know we have that um, on our TV. It's a free app you can download, Facebook Watch, and then you can see it you know, full size on your TV, which is kind of cool. I don't know if anybody ever uses that when you watch these. It's pretty cool. We use it to watch our church services that are virtual. Okay. Got a fold here for a highlight. Another one here. And highlight right there. Highlight on this petal right here. Okay, now this is all pretty dark. Got a little highlight right there. That's all pretty dark. Um, and over here is pretty dark. So I'm gonna move on to another flower. We're gonna move on down here and drop these highlights in. I'm gonna use that same recipe, the white and pyrrole red, Hansa yellow. Now it's a little bit more of the yellow tone here, so now I might add a little more yellow than red. And we'll just start putting the highlights in down here. And I'm using my number four brush right now. This is a four flat tip brush. And remember, leave little bits of that purple showing. I don't know if I said that earlier, but when we do this underpainting, we don't want to cover it all up, and it's really easy to get carried away and start doing that. So think about it now um, that you want to leave more of it. Don't cover it all up. You can always cover up more later. Okay, now this petal is actually pretty dark, so I'm not gonna put, it's this one right here. This is in shadow. I'm not gonna use this bright highlight for that one. I'm going to uh, put that in later when I add some of the darker tones. So I think I'm gonna move on from this flower and we'll put some in up here. Now we're gonna add a little bit more red back in because see, this one's more red, so I'm gonna go back to the pie roll red and add a little bit more of that in. So I'm still using the same puddle on my tray. I'm just kind of fluctuating between adding more red or more of the yellow. So we're gonna start with the highlights that are easy to find. There's this one long one here that's gonna help us to kind of place everything. Got a highlight there. So I always say, if you're confused, start with what's easy. Figure out the rest later. But don't ever, um, you know, just start painting things willy-nilly if you really aren't sure what something is or what the shape is. Just wait, because if you just start putting paintbrush strokes down, you're just gonna make yourself more confused if you're not actually sure of what it is you're painting on the reference. So always be aware of when you're making a brush stroke, be aware of where that is on the reference image. Okay, now down here there is a little bit of a highlight, but it's a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add some more red to what I'm doing here to make this highlight a little bit darker. And I'm gonna catch the bottom of this rose here. Same thing on the other side here, it's kind of dark. Just drop that in. Okay, how are we doing here? Do you guys have any questions? 
All right. So let's um, keep moving. Let's put the, the color in for the daisies here because I think that'll start to have some of these shapes make a little bit more sense. So let's mix up our white. Now the white um, is going to be darker than what you think because we're gonna start kind of in the middle and then push it towards a brighter white. Uh, let's see, Deborah is asking, where do you buy your pal plastic palette? So this is two palettes and I get these from Hobby Lobby. I love them because I like to put my fresh colors in the little mixing holes and then I do my mixing in the bigger compartments. Um, and it's really nice because it stays, um, so you can peel it off, that's what I was gonna say. You can peel the paint off when it dries. That's the only way I ever clean my palette. <laughs> All right. Um, Let's go to our whites. So we're gonna make our white using titanium white and Payne's gray and surprise, a little bit of alizarin crimson. So it's going to be kind of like a purpley white. That's what we're going to start with. And we'll add a little bit of glaze in there um, to thin it out. So Payne's gray, alizarin crimson and white. And we're gonna make it a little darker than what you think it should be so that we have room to push it brighter. All right, so let's start dropping that white color in for the daisies. Um, okay, so we're going to make sure we um, leave some of that purple. Not gonna cover it all up. And we're not gonna make all of the daisy petals the same shape. We wanna think about the fact that they are overlapping each other and they're just different, they're natural. So we won't see like perfect dividers between all of them either. With things like flowers, I think um, because our brains, you know, we really know what a daisy looks like. We know what flowers look like. Sometimes that can work against us because we're trying to create something the way we think it should be and that's not actually how it looks in the reference image. So really try to think about conquering that when you're working on floral paintings and really just painting what you see exactly. Now you can do some editing like we talked about up here there was an extra white petal behind um, the rose and I don't want to add that one in. I mean you can do things like that but just be intentional about it. Okay so let's first pass at the white on this one. You see, it is kind of dark, but I promise you it's gonna brighten up. And now we're going to do first pass over here. Now these are really dark right here. I'm not gonna put any of this highlight in over here. That's gonna be too dark. And these are pretty dark right here too. I might just skip that. Maybe I'll just do a tiny bit. Got a pretty dark shadow in between the petals right there, so I'm just gonna leave that as the purple. And keep moving. And we got a dark shadow there, I'm just gonna leave that. Like I said, I'm not, maybe I'll just one little dash there of that color, but I wanna leave this pretty dark here. Okay. Now, um, Let's put a little bit of yellow in for the centers before we go back and brighten up the daisy petals. Um, so we're going to make this yellow brighter. We mentioned before how the center of this daisy is definitely brighter than the center of this one. So um, we're going to make our yellow using, let's do um, the same color we used for our burnt orange. It's going to be Hansa Yellow Opaque and a little bit of that alizarin crimson to kind of warm it up a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll try that out. So maybe you already have a puddle of that and you can put a little bit of glaze in there too to thin it out. But it's gonna have a little bit more of the yellow in it than what we were using for that burnt orange recipe. Um, but let's just drop that in over the center. Don't worry about doing like the little ring around the middle and all that texture. We're just gonna put a glob of yellow in there for right now. 
we can add a little bit more texture in there later on. Now over here, this one really is more like green. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of Payne's Gray in with that same recipe. So now it's Hansa Yellow, Opaque, Payne's Gray, and Alizarin Crimson. So it's more of like an olive green. We'll put that in there. And where it's really dark, maybe I'll just leave my dark purple shadow that I already put in there. Okay. That looks good. All right, so now let's go in and brighten those white petals a little bit. Um, so we're going to use the same recipe that we were using for the white. We're just gonna add more white to it. So it was white, Payne's Gray, Alizarin Crimson but now it's gonna have more white in it. And we're gonna leave it a little bit more opaque because we, uh, we want the, this brighter color to really stand out. All right, so I'm gonna look and see which are my brighter petals and I'm just gonna brighten those up. I'm not gonna fully cover the petal, I'm just gonna catch the brightest parts of it. So that's why we put our first pass of um, the white down not quite so bright because that gave us some room to play with it. If we went straight white right away, we couldn't go any brighter. We'd kind of be like painting ourselves into a corner. But if you do your first pass of white and dull it down a little bit, then you can always um, make it brighter if you want to. And we've got some here. Do you guys see how I'm kind of putting these um, petals in like in one stroke? I'm not doing a bunch of little dashes. I'm just figuring out where the petal is and I'm just laying it down at once. Um, and there's a lot of reasons I do that, but I feel like it makes your brush strokes feel more confident than if you have like just a whole bunch of hashes all over the place. It makes it feel more like I don't know, like like you meant to do it. You know, it might be loose, but it was like intentional, I guess. Okay, so we put some bright highlights in on that one. Let's move over to this one. Um, let's see, Pat's asking, what brand paint do you buy for the titanium white? I buy um, Golden, uh, Golden Fluid Acrylics. I buy all my paints, um, they're all Golden Fluid Acrylics. Golden is the best. <laughs> All right. Got some of those highlights in. All right. Let's be done there. And now let's go in and just pop that brighter highlight on the center here. So we're going to go back to our yellow recipe, but we muddied it up with some blue, so we need to make a new one. But it's going to be... Um, we're gonna do white, Hansa yellow, and a little bit, this time we're gonna do a little bit of pie roll red. We're gonna make it more of a bright tangerine highlight. So pie roll red, light, Hansa yellow opaque, and white. And we're just gonna drop some highlights. Ooh, that's maybe a little too bright. I shouldn't have added so much white. It's gonna be more of the Hansa yellow and pie roll red, just a little bit of white in there. I put too much in. So we'll put a little dash of highlight there, which is gonna kind of create that dip in the center. I probably should have switched to a smaller brush. It's okay, okay. There's a little bit of highlight there. It's starting to show. Um, okay, so now that we have that bright highlight on our brush, so this is just the white, Hansa Yellow and Pyrrole Red. Let's use that color to pop some of the highlights out in these um, lilies here. Make sure when you go into your white paint that it's not contaminated. If you've got any blue in there, it's gonna dull your color down. You wanna make sure you've got fresh white. So I've got this really bright tangerine color now and I'm gonna use this on the very brightest 
parts of my flower. And just like we did with the, the daisies, we didn't do this fully bright from the beginning because we left ourselves some room to push it brighter. Okay, a little bit brighter here. Let's move down to this one, push that a little brighter and add a little more white. I'm gonna make it a little bit more contrasting. Okay. That's making these start to pop out. Okay. Now we wanna do the bright highlights on these two flowers. We want them to be a little bit more pink. We don't wanna have all that yellow in there. So let's do our highlights on the orange roses and let's um, do a puddle of mostly pyrrole red light and white. Let's see how that looks and maybe we'll just add a tiny speck of the Hansi yellow. But let's start with pyrrole red light and white. I need to get some fresh white. Mine's getting a little contaminated. My white paint always gets clogged. Okay. High roll red light and white. Just a little speck of yellow in there, of the Hansa yellow. And then we'll start with these highlights. Okay, so the brightest highlights I see are on this petal right here. Got a chunk of it right there, a little bit right there. And it always helps to kind of squint at your subject if you're having trouble kind of simplifying the forms. So squint at it and compare it to your reference image and see you know, if you're doing what you need to do. Or if maybe it's way too light or way too dark. one's looking pretty good. We'll come back to this, but just want to get some of these bright highlights in. Let's do the same thing over on this one. I think I need to add even more white. We're just going to push the brightest ones, but we're not going to do this highlight on every petal. We're just going to look for the ones that are the very brightest. We're also not going to try to represent every petal perfectly because we're just going to get bogged down and it'll just be overwhelming. So we're looking for what's most important to create the essence of the arrangement and the flowers, which is not everything. Okay. Looking good, okay, so remember I mentioned how we needed to put some of these dark areas in? Like there's a big petal right here that we haven't touched, it's right here. But if you squint, it's really dark. So we need to make this kind of dark yellowy orange tone, same thing right here. Um, and so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to mix up, let's see, we're gonna do Hansa Yellow and um, a little bit of that pyrrole red and some glaze. And we might just put it in like that and let, we're not adding any, um, we're not adding any white to it. We're just gonna see how this looks when we glaze this in over that purple that we put down. It might be all we need. So this is just Hansa yellow pyrrole red. Let's see how that works. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what we wanna do here. So don't have any white on your brush. Do just Hansa Yellow Pyrrole Red. I have a little chunk of paint in my brush there. You see how that just, that's, it works for us. That's why we put that dark purple down first because we kinda of like built up those shadows for us um, in advance. Same thing with this little bit up here. And we'll 
do that with this petal right here. I need to get a little more paint. So again, Hansa Yellow Opaque, Pyrrol Red, a little bit of glaze. That's what we're putting these dark petals in with. And I'm still leaving the very darkest areas as the purple. I'm just gonna let the purple stand for those darkest areas. That's why it's so, it's so much fun to work with an underpainting because you can kind of play around by letting those areas of the underpainting work for you and just kind of show through. It makes your life easier where you don't have to do as much work because a lot of the work is already laid down for you. Makes it feel like you're cheating. Okay, where else do we need to do this? Okay, so we've got some dark shadows in these. Oh, let's do it up here before we move on. Let's put those petals in. Okay. Okay, so the dark shadows in the two um, orangier roses, we want, to, um, we want to add a little bit more red to it now. So let's still do the same two colors, the pyrrole red light and Hansa yellow opaque, but let's just add more of the pyrrole red to it. And let's wash this into those shadows and let the purple work for us as um, the shadow. So we're just gonna go right over some of those darks we already built up with the purple. Right here, it's really dark. I should just let my dark purple sit there and not go over that. Yeah, that's making those flowers pop. So I like working in glazes. Thinner layers and thicker layers, you kind of go back and forth. It really just makes those flowers come alive. We don't want to cover up all that purple, but we want to kind of make the pieces start fitting together a little bit more. All right, that works, I think. Okay, let's see, Janet says, you see things in flowers that I never thought of seeing. <laughs> well, oh, thank you, Janet. I hope that, I, I hope that watching these um, makes you start kind of seeing things differently, you know, as you go through watching a lot of these demos that hopefully it kind of, makes things trigger in your mind um, just by you know practicing and watching and learning. Let's put a little bit of that red up on this one. I see some bright red up on this flower that I wanna drop in there, little bits of it, maybe a little bit up here too. And we have not done any green yet, and there's really not a whole lot of actual green in this image, but let's, uh, let's pop in a little bit of green color there. Um, just gonna look at how we're doing on time. Oh my goodness, it's six o'clock already. Okay, sorry guys, I was having so much fun, I wasn't paying attention to the time. Okay, we definitely need to uh, wrap things up. We're gonna try to wrap it up in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, okay, so greens. We already have a lot of our dark darks, right? So let's make a nice olive green and just add a few little highlights, okay? So we're gonna make our olive green using Hansa Yellow Opaque and a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of phthalo green. Um, and then we're gonna add some alizarin crimson to dull that down because otherwise it would be way too intense. So it's phthalo green, Hansa Yellow Opaque, and then alizarin crimson to dull it out. You're gonna use a lot of the Hansa Yellow Opaque to fight all that green. All right, 
So we're just gonna drop a few little highlights onto these leaves. A little bit here. And it's very subtle. We're just doing like a tiny little bit. We don't really need to do a whole lot at all. Um, and that'll just give us kind of the feel of some green going on. We can put some dark green under that one. Um, and we're gonna just put a little bit in the vase down here. Now there's a lighter green leaf here. Um, so we're gonna add a little bit more white to that mixture now. Well, we didn't have any white in there. We're gonna add some white to make it a little bit more limey. So now it's white, hansy yellow opaque, phthalo green, and alizarin crimson. So we're gonna add a little bit more white in there. Pop that out. And there, there's kind of this bright leaf right there that I wanna get in. And we'll brighten this up a little. Just a couple of tiny little dashes of green will do the trick. There. That's all we need, I think. Okay. Let's see what. Let's put the little um, edge of the vase this is like a mason jar. And so let's just indicate that a tiny little bit. Um, let's use, um, we're going to make a grayish blue using white, Payne's gray. And let's use a little bit of that. Um, that permanent dark violet. I think that'll be good. And we're just gonna add a little swoop there to kind of indicate the rim. Just a little highlight, not gonna put it in too perfect. And I'm gonna balance that out on the other side and give a little dash of that too. Maybe a little bit right here, just to kind of give us some indication that there's a vase going on there. Um, squinting now to see what else we need to do. I want to add some little flickers of blue on the daisies. So I'm going to make a bright blue using white and phthalo blue because um, I love those two colors together. You guys know as I get towards the end of a painting, that's when I bring out my, my secrets. Um, like this bright blue just always makes like every painting look good. So we're going to we're gonna throw it in there to make it look good, right? So let's just drop some of these little sparkly bits in here on our daisies. Yeah, I like that. We might even bring our whites a little bit brighter, but I just wanted to throw some of these little twinkle blues in there. That's what I'm gonna call them, the twinkle blues. It's twinkle blue time, guys. Um. Get our, ooh, that twinkle blue was a little too bright, or too blue. We need more white in that twinkle blue. There. And these bright blues always look good against um, like that coral color on the uh, roses, blah. It's getting to be the end of the demo, guys. I'm starting to lose my words, okay. Yeah, like those. I didn't even put anything in over where these petals are, but I don't think I really need to. Okay, I wanna drop some of this bright blue around the edges of our flowers, cause that's always fun too. And I'm gonna do it more so up towards the top where it's brighter. It's kinda like the light will be like dancing around them. So we're just gonna drop a few of these in. You wanna get enough paint on your brush to really just like lay them down. So I'm mixing up a pretty good puddle of them. Um, thank you, Judy. Glad you enjoyed watching and everyone else who is watching. All right, let's decide where we wanna do these. So I like to do these little twinkles just because I feel like it kind of like frames what we're doing. Um, it just kind of gives it some kick. Um, I do this with my portraits too. Just like to kind of give a little halo of light around the um, subject. But I also 
also want to leave that little window of orange there too in some places so don't cover all of that up um, but this is also kind of helping to hide some of my outlines that might still be kind of dancing around that I want to get rid of. Okay, I'm going to put just a little highlight in the vase. I just want to give it a little something there. Um, all right, we're getting close to the end of this demo, guys. I always try not to go over by too much. We're already at 10 after. Let's go in with some straight white on those daisies and just put a few little dashes of that. I feel like that's going to pop those out. Um, so I usually let like wait till the end of a painting to add straight white. Because um, you don't want to put it everywhere. You just want to put it in the very brightest places. and then it really pops. So don't put it on every petal, just put it on the ones that feel like in the reference image, they are the brightest. Um, you're welcome, David. Sorry, we're going a few minutes over. If you guys have to go, I understand. This will be um, available as a replay. And I also always post these on Tuesdays to my YouTube channel, so you can find it there too. If, uh, if you prefer watching on YouTube rather than on Facebook. But either way, it's gonna be there. You'll find it. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is just push the very darkest areas a pinch darker. So I'm going to make a black using Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson and just that tiny speck of that um, phthalo green now. So this is gonna be like a real inky black and we're just gonna throw this in the very darkest places. Remember I said you wanna get your darkest darks in the right places and your lightest lights. So now we know exactly where to put this because we have all these like context clues from everything else that we have done. And oh, I forgot to add the center to this lily. You guys will have to just drop that in there. You can see where it is. Okay, very darkest spots. Yeah, that's making the other areas really kind of pop out, right? We were missing those dark darks. We actually have a dark, dark along the edge of the vase here too. Okay, now we can kind of see the vase a little bit better. Yeah, all right. Okay, let's just put that little center in. I'm just gonna grab a little glob of kind of a whitish whatever's on my brush to put that center in because I wanna get that in really quick. Doesn't really matter what color it is. Let's just add that little center there. That works, good enough. Okay, this demo is done, you guys. Here's a closer look at how it turned out. Um, I'll probably post it again tomorrow after maybe I take another little look at it. But um, thank you guys for watching. Um, as always, I appreciate you um, spending your Monday nights with me. Um, and also, I really appreciate you guys sharing this demo. So if you have enjoyed this um, demo, please share it with your friends. Um, just hit that share button. It helps me so, so much. And um, also, if you're painting, don't forget to share the, um, your painting in Allie's Paint Friends. All right, everyone, have a great night and take care and happy painting.